Now, an independent panel appointed by the opposition-run Aljunit Hogang Town Council has filed a lawsuit against several of its town councillors to recover millions in damages, losses and what it calls improper payments. Now, the parties being taken to court include Workers' Party Chief Lao Tia Kiang, Chairman Sylvia Lim and Assistant Secretary General Pritam Singh. In a statement today, the three members of Parliament refuted the allegations and said they will contest the lawsuit. And our reporter Olivia Xiong joins us now with more. So Olivia, perhaps you can um, start off by telling us what are some of the main allegations against the town council? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the main um, thing that it comes down to is an overall sum that's being called into question of over $33 million in payments, um, with the town councillors essentially being asked to give an account of how this money has been used, failing which the Aljunit Hogan Town Council has asked for what it calls equitable compensation. And this is on the basis that the town councillors had uh, breached their uh, core fiduciary duties and the independent panel is also asking for the court to rescind these contracts and uh, I had a look at the statement of claims uh, earlier today submitted by AHTC and the first issue that it's um, raised is the appointment of FM Solutions and Services otherwise known as FMSS to be the town council's managing agent and this was seen to be problematic as the company was set up by two of its town council staff Ms. Hao Weng Fang and her late husband, uh, Mr. Danny Lowe, and they are also defendants in this case. Now, HTC alleges that its financial woes and the improper payments started here soon after the Workers' Party won El Junit GRC in the 2011 general election. And prior to that, the managing agent of the former El Junit Town Council was CPG Facilities Management. Now, CPG had its contract uh, prematurely terminated in August 2011, and that was about two years before its actual expiry date. Um, FMSS was then appointed as the managing agent, and this was done, um, there were two separate contracts. The first was done uh, for a transition period of one year, and it was deemed that no uh, tender was needed to be called, but an approval for this had been given during a town council meeting. But what is alleged is that in a bid to get approval from the town councillors, um, namely Ms. Sylvia Lim and Mr. Lao Tia Kiang had made misleading and false representations. For example, the statement of claims uh, cites that they had purportedly said um, that the existing agent wanted out of the agreement as soon as uh, practicable. They had also said there was a tight timeline and urgency and there was no time to uh, for a tender to be called but HTC says that this was not the case. Now um, instead the statement said the decisions to enter into a contract with the managing agent was made in bad faith and for improper purposes including to benefit those running FMSS. Now another point of contention as well as what the town council has called a flawed system of making payments and this is also questioning the lack of checks and balances in this regard. HTC alleges that effectively these interested persons had carte blanche in the town council to make payments which directly and financially benefited themselves. Um, it has also been alleged that the town council had um, breached the town council financial rules for 10 other construction projects and this was because it did not call a tender for each of the projects um, and also it did not accept the lowest uh, tender. Um, each project in this case is estimated to cost around $70,000. Alright, and perhaps Ollie, you can just refresh our memory and uh, tell us how did the independent uh, panel come about in the first place? Well, I think it's interesting to note that this is the first time in the case uh, in, in Singapore that an independent panel is actually investigating a town council and it actually has been, um, you know, leading up to this point today, it's been a few years that we've seen issues with uh, race with HTC's uh, finances. Uh, my colleague Afifa Arifin has a closer look at this. In February 2014, the Aljunit Hogang Town Council, then called Aljunit Hogang Punggol East Town Council, submitted its yearly audited financial report to then National Development Minister Corbun Wan. The report said auditors were unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to provide a basis for an audit opinion. Two weeks later, Mr. Kaur wrote to Deputy Prime Minister Than Munshan Mugaratnam, expressing concerns over the reliability and accuracy of the Town Council's accounting systems. He also said that this year's report raised more issues than the previous years. The following day, DPM Tharman directed the Auditor General to carry out an audit of AHPETC's accounts and records between 2012 and 2013. 
The Auditor General appointed accounting firm PwC to identify and follow up on any irregular transactions. Now, about a year later, the Auditor General's office issued its final report on the audit, which found that the town councillors and officers had breached their obligations. Subsequently, the National Development Ministry and the Housing Development Board requested for independent accountants to review the town council's past payments. In November 2015, the appeal court ordered the town council to appoint independent accountants. AHTC appointed accounting firm KPMG. KPMG then published its report in October 2016, which found substantial improper payments had been made to FMSS and FMSI. The payments were made under what KPMG described as a severely flawed system where there were no checks and balances. In February this year, the Town Council appointed an independent panel to recover all the improper payments that had been paid out and the damages and losses suffered. Right, and now reporter Kenneth Lim joins us live with reactions from the Workers' Party MPs. So, um, Kenneth, how are they responding to the allegations? Absolutely, I'll tell you. Right now, I'm here at uh, Badok Reservoir Road, where I just spoke to the Workers' Party MPs before their Meet the People session here. Now, Mr. Lao Thia Kiang, Ms. Sylvia Lim, and Mr. Pritam Singh reiterated an earlier statement today where they said that they will contest the lawsuit and will lay out their case in court, and I quote very vigorously. Now, in that statement, the Workers' Party said that Ms. Lau and Ms. Lim have been asked to give an account of profits made from the appointment of FMSS, which we know is the town council's managing agent. And if they can't do so, they'll have to pay damages of not less than $1.25 million. Now, in that statement, the Workers' Party's MP said that, and I quote, they have not benefited a single cent. And tonight, the MP said that they acted in good faith and in the best interests of the town council and its residents. Now, we understand that uh, more information will be provided in the course of the proceedings. But for now, let's hear what uh, the Workers' Party's leaders had to say. Uh, of course, lawsuits are never pleasant, but we welcome this opportunity to actually uh, go into detail, to explain to the court uh, and to the public why we made certain decisions at that point in time. And we hope that because town council management is a bit of a technical matter, we hope that with this court case there will be greater understanding, especially on the public's uh, point of view, uh, to better uh, understand uh, why and what the considerations were when we made those decisions and why we still stand firm today that what we did was in the best interest of the council based on the information we had at the time. I do my part um, and I always believe that you know what's important is you have to keep your conscience clear in politics. I mean, people always have different opinion of you, being a public figure. But let's do what you're supposed to do, what you have to do, and be clear of what you are doing. That is my belief, and that's what I've been doing. Now, Kenneth, I guess the next question in a lot of people's minds is, is that how is it possible that the town council can sue its own councillors? But of course, I tell you, that's a good question. But we must remember that, you know, the lawsuit is, of course, filed by an independent panel, which has the power to act on behalf of the town council. That basically means it has the power to start legal action on behalf of the town council, go through court proceedings as well as it can also make demands and come to settlements on behalf of the town council. Back to you. All right. Very many thanks, uh, Kenneth. And that was Kenneth Lim reporting from the Aljunit Hogang Meet the People session in Bado. Uh, now, so Olivia, now we've heard the response from um, the Workers' Party. Just going forward, what's going to happen next? Well, I think it was quite clear from the Workers' Party leaders' response that they do intend to contest this lawsuit. So from what I understand going forward with the intention to contest, um, they will have time to um, submit their response, their defence uh, to what the plaintiff has filed. But it may take um, possibly more than a year before this entire case actually goes to trial. So it will likely be quite a long drawn out affair to come. All right, good to know. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today.